Hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's WrestleMania 29 weekend, and the lovely, talented Jersey kid, <laughs> AJ, is here. How are you? I am very good. How are you? Talk, get closer. To, that's, you know what? That's why I need headphones. <laughs> I'm not going to hear if you're being loud enough. All right. I'll repeat that. I'm very good. How are you? Oh, I'm great. This is your <laughs> second WrestleMania? This is. I mean, technically, it feels like my first because the last one was eight, 18 seconds. It was an important 18 um, seconds, though. It, it was. And it was the beginning of my Black Widow reign. But um, uh, it, I didn't get to soak it in or really remember it. I have, like, foggy memories of it. So uh, hopefully this lasts a little bit longer. 20 seconds, I'll take. Um, but hopefully it's it's a lot longer than that. I've I've had cool moments happen in my life, and they're they're over. They can be overwhelming and fast. But that particular moment must feel crazy because even as a fan, I've been to now four out of the last five or something incredibly dorky like that. And the moment, even as a fan, feels very big. So I kind of can't even <laughs> envision that feeling of coming down the ramp. Yeah. In, in that situation, especially because you grew up a wrestling fan. Yeah. And, and, you know, and that's maybe the, the best compliment I ever get is when uh, fans can tell me that they can tell I'm a fan, you know, because they kind of see it, that I'm sort of just, you know, being a, a, a big kid when I'm out there sometimes. And especially uh, WrestleMania last year, it's really funny if you watch it you just kind of see me with this giant smile like oh like looking at everyone and like not really paying attention to what I'm supposed to be doing and uh I was just a big kid that was like oh my gosh I made it you know I actually made it here and to to do that again this year hopefully it's a little bit longer who knows but um and it's in New Jersey it makes it just a million times more special now I will say first of all you're from Union City is how what uh, 20 minutes from where we're at? Yeah, 20, maybe a little less than less that. Less than that? Yeah. You didn't grow up listening to Hot 97? You're not a hip-hop kid at all, huh? I'm not particularly a hip-hop kid, but I definitely, it was in my my house a lot. My mom is. is your mom my is. My mom is big into Hot 97, actually. Really? Yeah. How yep. old's your mom? My mom is like 48. She's oh, young. Oh, she's young yeah. and cool. Yeah, she's the young pretty mom. She was actually, would bring me to school and, and I had teachers be like, girls, get to class. And I'm like, it's my mom. Oh my God, I wonder <laughs> if your mom listens to me now. Does she still live here? Uh, no, she lives in Puerto Rico now, but she would if she was here, I no, promise. I'd, I'd like to think that she would. <laughs> um, why does she live in Puerto Rico? Uh, that's just where they live, with some family now. Really? Uh, yeah. That's nice. So you take vacations to Puerto Rico? To visit uh, if I see them, yeah, it's kind of like a fancy vacation. Yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. cool. Um, I want to give you credit for something. And I'm not saying it's intentional, because I think it's sincere. But your image, you you kind of alluded to that, that you said people like can tell that you're a real fan. But it's also like... Your image outside of your character is really awesome. Oh, thank you. Like, well, you've no, and I'm and I'm saying it's sincere, <laughs> but I'm sure also that you're aware of 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 the of how people see you. But as an, you you seem like a tomboy who happens to be really pretty, <laughs> but is really into wrestling, um, and kind of like a, a and a geek. And now you have like the you're you're the geek stream girl too. You have an awesome sort of oh. positioning. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> In other words, you. I appreciate that. Jew if you need a Jewish new manager, <laughs> lawyer, I could we could right. make some things happen. Sounds good. Um, uh, it's good to have options. Uh, thank you. And you know what? It's it's funny because it could not be more genuine and and it was some, it could not have been uh, I could not have been advised against it more. Uh, it was something that Which part know, of it? All of it. It was very much, you know, there's a formula and there's a, there is a model that works and it's like, why go outside of that? And um, and so if you watch like the first episode of NXT, I'm like, OK, let, let's do it. Let, I'll do the formula. And then very slowly over time, I was like, OK, let me sneak my Converse in here or let me sneak this, you know, skull T-shirt. And then it, it, there was a point where I was like, I, I'm just going to apologize if this doesn't work. But hey, I'm a tomboy. Like, let's see how people react to that. And there was like the promo on NXT, and the crowd's like, yeah. And it was like, oh, this works. Okay, do it. You know. And and I've slowly gotten a chance to do that over time, and everything just kind of worked out that way. And to me, like, the fans have connected to me because I'm not putting on a front. I'm not trying to be someone I'm not. And that's okay. It's okay to be a tomboy chick. Like, you can still succeed. Wait, so are you saying there's not going to be that <laughs> WrestleMania Playboy issue with AJ? <laughs> They're not going to get that? Oh, my God. Maybe when hell freezes. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's when you really start getting trotted out a lot. Yeah, Once yeah, that Playboy yeah. issue drops. <laughs> oh, my God. I can barely wear, like, a V-neck without being <laughs> uncomfortable. Like, you wear shorts. That. You wear fairly short shorts. Yeah, but that's, like, on television. Yeah, not in real life. Yeah, like, I, it's this or sweats or, like, it's, it's very hard. For me to so has uh, first of all, are you dating anyone? I'm with Dolph Ziggler. Oh, I knew that. Damn it. <laughs> oh, Look, I even God. drew you this beautiful picture. I know. <laughs> I forgot about that. But I am curious about whether dudes, if you've opened the door now for the 
um, geeky wrestling fan to be like, she's a regular girl. I've got a chance. <laughs> I feel like the door has been cracked open and you've like. I hope they like, be, I mean, like, who knows if, if me and Dolph will be together forever. I mean, um, who knows? <laughs> but, you know, like that, that to, to me, that's why I want, like, I want people to be cool and comfortable with me and know that, like, I'm one of them and I just happen to sneak in here and nobody's noticed yet and kicked me out. And I know you're going to be sweet <laughs> and give the real answer right now, but that's still, that attitude still has to lead to some awkward moments. It ha <laughs> Like, I watch it with the male guys, uh, uh, the male superstars, so I know for you there have to be moments because you're nice and you're comfortable and you present this character where there's just has to be, you're just like, ooh, this is... Well, isn't there someone who's supposed to the same way you were trying to avoid me getting over to interview? It, even worse I than that. I was trying to get over here. I know you. Did. Um. Uh, uh. You know what? The, the only time it gets weird is like the other day a, a kid asked me to his prom and I was like I can get arrested for that. Um. So I have to say no. But you <laughs> but responded. I did respond. That's pretty nice. But, um, it's funny. I've got a lot of proposals, especially around when it was proposal season for me, and uh, I was proposing. People oh yeah, that's right. Me. So I, they've got a lot of that in in uh, in real life. So. so I I do, have, cool. I do have to ask you one semi-tough question. Okay. Okay, because you obviously are a good person and morally <laughs> sound and about yourself and confident, yada, yada. Yet your character over the last year has has done its thing. She <laughs> she <laughs> has... When your voice gets higher, that's when you know... That something bad happened. Yeah, well, I added I, it up recently because at first I was like, okay. And then I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> She has been. What is going on with AJ? Oh my god! So how do you? But do you do you morally have any issue with that, or do you see it totally separate and don't think that it affects the way people, like younger women, see you or anything like that? Or how how do you? Definitely think it's it's separate. And I and then it, the fact that I still have you know girls coming up to me in autograph signings and they're young and they just they relate to the good aspects of it and they relate to the just me being the only chick that can kind of stand on her own and, and keep the guys in check, I think, is the element I want to get across. Um, I think it's also just me making up for uh, just, like, never getting a date until I was, like, 22. So, um... <laughs> sad. Sad. It's pretty sad. I, it's, a real, it's real life, though. Um, and... <laughs> you didn't have a real date till you were 22. Uh, I think the first date I, I ever went on was, like, 21. So, it isn't But you mean... See, but everyone always says that, but you don't mean it. You, you had... You hung out with boys before. You just didn't go on dates. No I literally one... never had a boyfriend until I was okay, 21. Okay, okay. <laughs> but let's clarify I this. I never went on a date. I never kissed a boy. Nothing. Hold on, hold on. You're saying you didn't. That, this is where the question is. You <laughs> didn't kiss a boy until you were 21 I years old? I have uh, made this public knowledge on Twitter. 21. Yes. You've said that before. Yeah. Isn't that sad? I, I'll put, let me put it this way. I was 14, and I was on the verge of suicide. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm such a loser. And what's going on around me? You waited seven years beyond that. You know what? I was a good kid. And it just was like focused on school and stuff. So oh my God. isn't that hilarious and sad? So I'm just, I have time to make up for is the thing, basically. So I'm just trying to, you know. But that really does position. Yeah, well, you're, your character is making up for things that you didn't get to do. <laughs> But it really does put you in an awesome position as far as the role you can play for women, which is pretty cool. Oh my god, I'm I'm, I'm having such a such a good time, and I think what we get to do is pretty funny, and uh, I can see the the humor in it, and and also I can see it in the positive light of a of a girl that's take charge, and and yeah, like that's part of it. But there also hasn't been a woman who has kind of you know beat up guys before, and I don't know if that's ever happened, and so I, I well hold look on, at that, you hold know? on now. Besides China, no, 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 in, in closer to your current role right. I was talking about her earlier the great sensational Sherry used <gasps> to beat Gosh, some dudes asses I loved her no 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 so much I, 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 my, I, I told my wife the other day I was like honey come in here she's like I'm not watching I was like honey I just want you to watch this woman sensational Sherry for a minute and see how awesome she is yep. she had so much heat that it seemed like she could Guys could fight her yep. because she would beat their ass so much that if a guy attacked Sherry, you didn't even think it looked crazy because yeah, you're like, fine. she deserves it. She's <laughs> and she'll be fine. She'll take she, care of herself. She, right, she has something in her purse. <laughs> if, if some, uh, uh, do you do you look up to people like I Sherry? I definitely do. And I, uh, for the longest time, like the uh, contradiction of, of Sherry to Miss Elizabeth was something that I was like, if I can be both sides of the coin and like and be that person that's gonna be really cool now and i feel like i've kind of tried to do that now i understand why geeky men fall in love with you <laughs> just hearing a woman compare i've literally had that same thought i'm like god it's amazing <laughs> macho man worked with elizabeth and then sherry yeah. they're polar opposites yeah, and yet it worked to me they both i was worked. like let me be both of them at the same time and and kind of you know mix in a lot of different elements but i like that's cool to me it's like what it just depends on what 
how you treat me. That's can the girl you get. Can I tell you something? <laughs> I'm going to tell you one thing that bothers me. And this is not remotely your fault. And I don't <laughs> even know whose fault this is. I don't even know. I'm I'll not, complain to them for you. I'm not blaming WWE necessarily either, though it is partially WWE's fault, but fans' fault as well. At one point, I believe you were the hottest superstar in the company. I think, <laughs> I think I was at the show, whichever the pay-per-view was, when everyone was waiting for your entrance. It was in New York. Which paper was that, Ernie? We, when we were waiting, we spent the whole pay-per-view watching the ramp to see when you were going to come interrupt oh, the match. Uh, um, no Way Out, maybe? Was that in Jersey? It was in Jersey or New York. It was like nine months ago. Maybe whenever it was. It was. No way out. And I remember the whole paper. It was here, no? Yeah, it was here. It was, oh, it was in this building? God, this is an interesting building. Yeah, um, very special to me. Very special building. Um, and the whole crowd was not watching the match. We were all watching the ramp to see when you were going to show Aww. up. And I, and I remember thinking, I was like, man, she's like the most over person in the company. <laughs> but then at the same time, what drives me crazy is you're that hot as a manager character. But then you would go out and have a singles match. And I would get frustrated with the crowd participation. I'm like, the crowd's right. willing to be excited for her to see her come out and interrupt the dude's match. But when you'd have a match with another good diva, right. I felt like the interest wasn't there. And I, I would imagine that would get a little frustrating and that's like the, the, the interesting thing is if you look at the divas uh, the Trish Lita era they were such well-rounded uh, characters and that people uh, got behind them because they were involved in all this kind of scandal and drama and so you got to know them and, and love them or hate them for who they were and then they'd get in the ring and then you could pick a side because you believed in one of them you really truly did and and that is something that like we might be missing in some ways now and and so when now people are like when are you gonna get back in the ring well you know say stuff like that to me it's like give it time like let people get to know me and hate me or love me but then we also then, need to get to know and love and hate someone else exactly it can't just that's, be you that's exactly it like you cannot i can't do it on my own so if we can get like we've spent a year on me so like let's take a step back and maybe we get somebody else in the spotlight and then you know and then the two of us can go and do something and i feel like we're close to something like that with caitlin because people have gotten to see her as an underdog for so long mm -hmm. but like that needs to be kind of developed and now you have two people they care about, and now let's get together and get in the ring, and I think people will care. And that's kind of the magic that was the golden era of divas, you know, back in the Attitude Era. And if we can get that again, I think we're close. We just we have all the right pieces. We just need to kind of figure out the formula and, and get there again. Who are your top three to five, your choice, females in the history of the wrestling business? Oh, my gosh, that's so difficult. Don't worry, just going, ba <laughs> just going back like the last 60 or 70 years. Right, right. Um, you know what, I can't even... You don't have to number them, just name a few at least, or that, that means something to you. I don't, uh, just personally, because I'm sure there are people who are like, this one's more important than this one, but for me, who, uh, if I ever had to, like, just getting, putting everything together and kind of taking pieces from people and seeing what worked and saying, I'm going to, you know, try that and put it, my own spin on it, the people I've gone to have been uh, Sherry, Miss Elizabeth, Stephanie, um, who I'm obsessed with to this day, and I kind of just steal bits of her hair every time I hug her. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and Trish and Lita, and, and oh gosh, Molly. I can't, I can't even pick a top five because Molly was just my be all and end all as well. Um, so probably those six, uh, I think, have, if you were to mix them into one person, would be just the perfect diva, and, and I'm trying. <laughs> and uh, But trying to be the first me as well. And uh, hopefully one day I'm on someone's list. I think you're on your way, kiddo. <laughs> I hope. I think you might be all right. Well, listen, um, WrestleMania is Sunday, in case you didn't know. Oh, yes. And, yeah, and you are, you're going to be involved in a uh, tag title match? Yes. Uh, my wonderful family of uh, Ziggy, Biggie, and I'm Baby. Um, Ziggy, Biggie, and Baby. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, Dolph Ziggler and V. Langston in his, his first match ever as WrestleMania. Pretty big deal for him. I don't know how he pulled that off. That's but, pretty impressive. Um, yeah, and the, they're going to be this amazing tag team, and, and we work together so well, and we're this unit, and we've been working so hard for a couple months to get this opportunity. And to uh, we're our goal is to steal a show and we are going to and we're going to steal a tag team title. Well, you need to do is steal a win. <laughs> you need to get this win on Sunday. All we right? really do and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure we you do You haven't well. gotten to manage a, ta a tag team champs yet. That could be fun. That's I know. another. I have to say that I'm like a, a, you know, I bring people to gold. I have to get there. No, and like so many greats have done that too. Lita, like oh, that's a that's a role yeah. that people play as well. That's pretty fun. I would fun. love to. I've, so far I've only uh, led people to lose their gold yeah. and stuff. So, okay, I'm a little bit of a black widow but I'm going to try to turn that around this Sunday. 
<laughs> um, all right. And by the way, pretty cool that you work with Dolph, who is definitely one of the greatest performers on the planet right now. He is amazing. I was such a fan of his before we even got together. And people would ask me, what is the uh, the, sh- the match you're looking most forward to on the show? And I would always say his. Do you want to know the w- thing that made me like a, a stand for um, Dolph Ziggler? What? Um, this is so little and random. The way that he slides onto the apron. I don't know if you notice it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are times when he does it. I was in person once and I noticed it. And he slid like eight feet. It was like literally slid on the entire side of the ring. I was like, yo, that guy's crazy. It's a uh, skill. He's a talented yeah. man. All right, AJ, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Jersey.